Terry Vanderheiden here. Today I'm going to show you how I convert my images from color digital images to black and white. I do that all here in Lightroom. So let's get started. So the first thing I do for demonstration purposes is I'm going to make some virtual copies. So I have a few images here. Let me just make a couple of more. That's pretty simple. You just right click, go down to virtual copy. And I'm going to make a couple of them so that we can compare later what, uh, what we've done. So let's go into this first image here. Here's the color image. And we're going to go over into the develop module, obviously. And what a lot of people do in Lightroom is they'll take their images, bring them into the develop module and just simply go down to saturation and slide that off. Now, again, there's no color in it. So this would be considered, uh, you know, a monochrome image, but it's not a black and white. And I'll show you why here in just a second. If we go into, we'll go back into the grid mode and grab this second image. That's the uh, same virtual. I make the virtual copies just because it's a, uh, uh, it's a great way to do demos, but you don't really have to do them in your daily workflow. So back into the develop module. Now, instead of going down here and sliding over the saturation, I'm going to actually go up here and click on the black and white button. And what the black and white button does is it not only creates it into a monochrome, very similar to having no saturation, it actually gives you a whole lot more freedom. So down here, when we go into black and white, we can have access to all of these sliders that will allow us to deal with the colors as if we were putting filters on the camera back in the old film days. So being able to extract blues, extract reds and things like that, or add those colors into the image will allow us to get much more creative control. So if we look at this image there and we slide the red back and forth, we can see that that has some tonal range in this black and white. And we can make the decision as to whether we want the edges of that rock light or we want them dark. So we're just going to go a little bit light orange let's take a look as we slide it look at that big difference in the orange so we have the ability to create whatever tone we want in those rocks so we're gonna we're gonna make those light as well now when we slide the yellow keep in mind that yellow also has a pretty big effect on usually any of the greenery that you're shooting so those pine trees have a lot of yellow in them so we can decide do we want those pine trees dark or do we want them light so we'll, we'll make them dark in this case Next color down is the green and obviously you'll have a little bit of green control in a lot of your foliage and that sort of thing. So we're going to pull down the green and keep that a little on the dark side. Aqua, you get probably a little bit in the sky, but not a whole lot, but check out the blue. When we take the blue slider and we move that over to the right, we can make that sky really light or we can slide it down and make that sky really dark. So this is the control that we're missing by taking out just the color in the saturation slider. We have all the control here of all of our colors and how they appear to us in black and white. So the next thing that I'll do is that I'll look at this and I'll say, wow, okay, this is great. And with this ability, we also brought out our clouds as well. So I'll go back up into the basic panel. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to use the shortcut J on your keyboard. When you hit J on the keyboard, what it does is the toggle switch. And it'll turn off the clipping points. So you can see here, there's a little bit of blue that shows up and that means that that blue is absolute black. And so when we're working with this, if we want to have the full range of tones in here of a full black and a full white, we can use this toggle switch. J is on and J is off. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and take our black slider and we can obviously pull that in and now you get a whole lot of black, which is probably too much because generally you want detail in all of your shadows, a little bit of detail, but it's nice to have just a little bit of real 100% black. You just don't want to go overboard with it. So there's a little bit of black. Now on our whites, if we were to bring that over, we can see that we can, wow, we can bring in all kinds of whites. Now, again, same deal as black. You don't want to overdo this. You just want just a little bit of absolute white. So just in the front of that, that waterfall, we're going to have a little bit of absolute white. So we can turn the J key off so we don't have to look at that. And now we have a full tones, black and white. If we compare this to what we had done with just taking out the color, you can see the difference. 
see much more depth in the sky. It's not quite as flat. It, there's a lot more interest in this as a true black and white. Let's do another one. So like in this image here, this is of an osprey, it's in full color. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do the same thing, the same kind of conversion. So let's go into develop module and take a, do a quick conversion of just taking the saturation down, meaning where there's no color at all. And we'll go back and we're gonna do this again the proper way. And we'll go into the develop module and we'll go over and hit the black and white key. Then we'll go down to the B and W palette and now we can start dealing with the tone. So as we slide the red tone, as you remember from the image, it was pretty monochrome to begin with. As you slide the image, uh, as you look at the image, you'll see that there's not a whole lot of reds in there. Let's check out the oranges though. Look, there are some oranges in there. We can decide whether we want dark feathers or light feathers. So we have the control of how that's gonna look. Let's check out the yellow. We slide the yellow, look, we can make the bird's head almost gray or we can lighten it right up and also you can see it really lightens up his eye so let's go ahead and keep that on the lighter end of that scale green not a whole lot happens in the green and aqua a little bit of darkening of the sky let's check out the blue we knew we had a blue sky again we have control we can make that a light sky or we can make it a dark sky depending on what you're looking for uh, in this case again Purple and magenta don't have much of an effect, so we'll just leave that alone. So we'll go back up into the basic, and of course the next thing we're gonna do, just like before, we're gonna hit the J key and see what's, what's clipping, what is absolute black. So right here you can see there's some blue around the edges of the feather and some blue hidden in the nest. And again, if we wanted to make that more extreme, we could really increase that, but you don't wanna do that. You only want a little tiny bit of true absolute black. So we're gonna pull that back a little bit just so we have just a few bits of black in there. And then with the white, we don't see any red yet, so we wanna make sure that we're gonna get some red in there. There we go. Just a little bit of red on the feathers so we know that we have some absolute black. Hit the J key, turn that off. Let's go back in and do a quick compare. And this one's pretty dramatic because again, we have a lot more control doing it this way. This way here, we're just looking at the image where the color has been extracted and here we have some control control over what we want those colors to render in black and white all right one more time we'll do it again again here we have a picture of half dome kind of a hazy day it's not that not that great of a day so let's go ahead and turn this into a black and white and this is something i encourage you to do if you've got an image that looks okay in color check it out in black and white convert it and see how you like it because it might be something that really looks uh, fantastic in black and white. So let's take this one and we'll drag the saturation way down on this. Go back in and then we'll do the proper conversion. First things first, go to develop module, hit the black and white key, go over to our black and white palette, and then we have our control over our tones, okay? So the reds, not a lot of reds in there. Uh, oranges don't seem to do too much. Yellows, uh, not a whole lot of yellows. Green, we could probably get a little bit of green, but not much. Aqua, uh, there's a little bit. We can darken a little bit. But if you remember that image, it was really, there was a lot of blue in the image. So as we take our blue slider, look what we can do. We can either make this really light or we can bring it all the way down to the other side, extracting as much blue as we can and getting a much bigger contrast in this image. So this is a lot more dramatic and looks a lot better. And again, purple and magenta don't have much of an effect on this particular image, but obviously if you had more purples and magenta in your image originally, then you could make some changes like that. So we're not quite finished with this, so let's go back up to the basic panel, hit our J key and see what we've got. We don't really have any pure blacks or pure whites yet. So let's take our black slider and simply drag over until we get a little bit of blue showing down in the forest so we know there's some absolute black in the forest and then we take our whites and we can take that slider and move it till we just get a little bit of red showing there we go a little bit in the clouds in the distance so we know that now we've got some some absolute white in that image okay turn off the j key now there's one other thing you can do with these images in black and white and that is take your brush tool and do some, some work on an individual basis on individual parts of the image. So we'll just click on the brush tool. Now I have some brushes 
that uh, if you want to check out, there'll be a video up here about how the, wait, no, it's up here. There'll be some, a video about how the brushes work if you're interested in that kind of thing. So I'm going to click on this real quick, like make sure that I have loaded up my highlights up brush. And I'm going to just take and paint some of the areas that I want more contrast of. So if you've got a rock wall that is shining in the sun, you want more whites out of that, this is how you do it. You do it on the tip of a brush and you have so much more control over raising those highlights up that are on the face of this uh, half dome. You know, in this case, we've got a little bit of snow. We can lighten up the snow. We don't, snow, snow should be white. So you gotta, you'd like some detail in it ideally, but it really needs to be white. You know, you don't want it to be gray snow. So in this case, we're gonna go through and just roughly go in on this demo and highlight some of our whites. And that looks just so much more dramatic. Let's check out this cloud here. We can probably lighten up that cloud. Now, the cool thing about this, when you're working in a brush, you can go back to the original brush, hold the option key down, put it right on top of that brush. And now you'll see all of the areas that we just affected with that brush, the masking actually of it. So we're going to hold this down. And if you push your, your mouse to the left, it will reduce what we just did and or increase what we just did. So in this case, we want to reduce a little bit because it's just a little too much and we can pull it over to the side. And that way we've reduced the amount of effect that that brush has on our image. So we go back in and now we can take a look at the two images. One was where we just removed the color out of the image and made it basically a gray and gray. Or we can actually make sure we have a true black and a true white and make it a full black and white image. Glad you checked this out. If you'd like to hear more about black and white photography, I've got a podcast called The Nature Photography Podcast. It's available on all the players and it might be worth taking a listen to. Also too, if you're interested in the brushes, check out that video and I'll tell you more about that. All right, take care.